anything I need to know? Just a free flowing conversation? Just an interview? Did you research my life? Well, I, res- I researched with? a few things. I've got a couple things written down. Right, um, we're just gonna me. bullshit. We're just gonna bullshit a little bit. Um, but first things first, Sanjay. I would just like to give us both a shout out for owning these beautiful fake plants to just really oh. spice up the background. Look at that. Where did it go? There it is. <laughs> yes. Thanks to the thanks to my wife who this has made it through every house that I've lived in. Hey, are we are we on right now? Is this yes, yes. Oh, <laughs> I thought you were like waiting for an intro or something. Great. This is no, great. No, no, we just do it. I do the intro afterwards. Uh, usually when I have a little peace and quiet in the house. So sometimes my daughter joins me and then all hell breaks loose. But anyways, That's no, we're in it. We're in the interview. We're doing it. I love it. Um, how are you doing? How do you function? I feel like you and I, when we were both at WWE, I didn't really work with you all that much because you came in, you're busy doing your thing. Yeah. I'm busy doing my thing. So we didn't really cross paths all that much. Now right. we're fucking in it to win it I, together. Yes. Buddy. I love it. <laughs> I Are do you too. having fun, Renee? I am. I am having fun. And the thing that I love is like, I love working with you. I love when Don Callis jumps in on some things as well. I think like the backstage vibe is actually a ton of fun because it's like that collaborative. Yes environment that we that we didn't have before there's a little bit of panic in the eyes of like what are we doing what are we accomplishing here how much time we always pull it off we always pull it off we always pull it off and we're always begging you to just give us like an extra 30 seconds which you more often than not can come up with thank you for that I remember last week, uh, you guys, what what happened, Sanjay? You ran away like like something important with like you went to put out a fire or something. Yes. I came back and I said, I got a six thirty seconds. <laughs> we were literally <laughs> in the middle of about to go live, and Sanjay just—I've never seen a human being move that fast. I literally, I was like, oh my god, something bad must have just happened. I thought you were running out to the <laughs> ring. I, I did not know what was happening. And yeah, you you went to the truck, you got or truck, or maybe you went to Tony. You got us thirty extra seconds, which we needed. So thank you. So, so what I always tell people, they always ask me, hey, you know, what, what are your first questions? How, how do you function? Well, it's time management. So I, I knew I had a window of like uh, 30 seconds to go get this done. And bam, did I get it done. You got it done. You That's 100% it. did that. So, okay. Again, my observation of Sanjay since like, as I kind of prefaced in WWE, it's just, it's a different boat it's a different vibe or like i you know we'd sat in the production meetings together etc yeah. etc et but then you kind of go your separate ways and go to your jobs now we're like we're working so much more together and i just get to like observe you in your element and it is like a sight to behold like legitimately i don't but like so we you know we were sitting down to do the interview with soraya for rampage And we're about to do it. And I can't remember who it was that walked up to you, but you're like talking to them about the finish of their match. Then you also still had to go out and do your own promo in the show. Like, how do you juggle doing all these things and keep your head straight? That's a great question. I, I really don't know. Um, I, I just, I guess it comes natural. So, so when I said time management, you know, I, you know, kind of trying to be funny, but, but yes, it is time management. I, I, I kind of prioritize what needs to get done in my head. Um, I want to shout out to my team. Those guys are the best. And yeah. you, you now are working with them closely. Jeremy, Giancarlo, Dan Zane. I mean, those guys, uh, I, I lean on them. And what I've always, I had this conversation with one of them yesterday was, look, guys, I, I do my best to give you as much opportunity to empower yourselves to get shit done. Because yeah. that's the only that's the only way that things can, can operate here. Um, I, I do my best to kind of give the information that needs to be given, empower these guys to, you know, go out and tackle what needs to be tackled. But... Uh, it, it is a lot of it is time management, you know. Uh, I always joke that I can't walk down the hallway uh, trying to go to the bathroom w- without like ten people. But Sanjay, Sanjay. because so you're it, the it guy, just... everybody knows it. Like, not only are you like the guy that does have the answers, but you also get shit done. You're very effective. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. That seriously, that means a lot because uh, ever since I stopped wrestling, it, it was a it was a weird transition. Okay, now I've stopped wrestling. I'm working backstage. Um, is this really what I want to do? You know that 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 sort of thing. And quickly, I learned yes, I I love uh, doing what I do backstage. I, I'm actually I'm more fulfilled professionally uh, working in a backstage capacity than I did, you know, going out there and wrestling. God, I was um, going to ask I, you about I, that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, and that may be strange for, for, for wrestlers to hear, but, you know, fuck 
performing, going out there. I like being. I mean, backstage. you still get to scratch that I itch, do. though. I do, I do, and, and, and that's a whole different topic that we can kind of get into as well. Because I never thought that I'd be in front of a camera ever again. Um, right. But 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 I feel fulfilled in, in helping people and, and getting them, uh, getting them to where kind of. Where, where I got to, where I got to be on TV, I got to be successful, I got to kind of check off these boxes through my professional career, and, and, and I want to help others kind of be fulfilled in that capacity and help them accomplish that. And, and I think I have done that now since, I mean, I haven't, I haven't wrestled now in five years. So for the past yeah. five years, I've just been immersed in kind of just cultivating talent, new talent, uh, existing talent, just kind of showing them the ropes and getting shit done, like you said. It feels like, because even like from my experience as well, like coming into AEW and like I am on a talent contract, but I also have a producer contract as well. So it's cool to be able to to kind of le- use all of those skills that you've acquired over the years. And like, I don't know if you feel the same way, but when you go from like kind of like essentially just being on camera, like, you know, when I'm hosting shows and whatever, obviously a lot of prep work goes into those and I'm working with the producers, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm essentially there as like on-air talent. But it's all these skills that you acquire while doing that, that now in AEW, I'm like, wow, I actually kind of know quite a bit about how to make these work and what makes sense and what the shot should look like and what the blocking should be like and storyline wise, how things make sense. It it is actually far more fulfilling than maybe I even thought that it was going to be. Which is kind of what I experienced. So uh, it, it has been now, uh, in 2012 was when I first kind of worked in the office at, at, at TNA at Impact Wrestling. So for yeah. 10 years yeah. now, like a lot of people, especially if you work with me in WWE where I was just a match producer. And, right. and that is kind of what WWE is where, okay, this is your job. And and I kind of, which kind of was part of the reason why I wanted to kind of quit where I I was like, look, I, I think I know in my heart of hearts, I can do more than just be a match producer. Um, yeah. Because before I, before WWE, I was at Impact. And what you see now, uh, I did that at Impact. And, and so I, I had I had all these experiences and I got to WWE. It was like, okay, you have this one segment and you're going to produce it. And then that's it. And I was like, yeah. Hmm, yeah. yeah. But I see all this other stuff where I feel like I can contribute um, and I wasn't feeling as fulfilled there, but yes, it, it is so fulfilling to kind of just be a part of every little thing. And like I said, at the end of the day, it, it, it to me, it's solely being able to help talent. And it's nice to be busy like that too. Like, even though there's times that I'm like, Sanjay, can you just take five minutes so that I can take five minutes? <laughs> <laughs> uh... You just doing all of these things and it's you know it's great to be busy and you know it's kind of like that old adage like you want to get something done ask a busy person to do it and that's exactly the case with you but to actually be able to like do all those things execute them and yeah we always pull it off like there's always figuring out a way to do it whether that time just is pull it off you. but we're hitting a home run Renee yes okay no, two different agreed. things there yes true no you're right you're absolutely <laughs> yes. right you're right you're right um so with, on like the producing side of things, how do you like switch gears when you're working with everybody putting together their promos, their matches, whatever, but then you also still have your own promo to go out there and do? How do you make time for that? It's funny you say it because uh, a couple of days ago, and I don't know when this is going to air, but a couple of days ago, we were in Indianapolis and it was two segments before I had to go out and Jeff Jarrett walked by. He said, hey, man, you, you know what you're going to say? And and I, and I was like, shit, I totally forgot. I got to <laughs> come up with this promo. So I said, OK, well, uh, let me go get with Max. And I got with those guys and I just kind of threw something together in my head, but it was like that late in the game where I was like, oh shit, I forgot I got to cut a promo out there. So, okay, what do I got to say? I, it helps that I know where the stories are going and it helps right. that I know what the story is about. Uh, I think if I didn't have that, uh, I would have that talent anxiety that we see always backstage of where's this going? What am I doing? What am I going to say? Yeah. Whereas I have the, uh, I'm privy to all of this stuff that they might not be privy to. So it helps me kind of formulate what I'm going to say when I'm out there or where I'm trying to go. You know, does it also, because you, you don't have time to overthink it. I think a lot of times it's like, you have this promo on the show all day. This is what I want to say. This is this, this is the out, blah, 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 blah. When you don't really have time to overthink it like that, you're just doing it. There's something special just, about doing it. Absolutely. Just doing it. Uh, I'll use an example, uh, heading into full gear. We, you know, me lethal and, and Sutton did this, uh, road to promo to, to hype up the match with sting and Darby versus lethal and Jeff. And, uh, 
it, it got some love and, and traction online and, and I was getting tagged in a lot of stuff. And I say, and I was like, what well, people like this? I literally thought, gave it zero thought. Uh, yeah. I literally looked at lethal and I said, do you want to say something? He said, yeah, I'll, you, you, I'll go off of what you got. So I, I said, okay, G Giancarlo just hit record and I just spewed it out. Right. And yeah. it was like, yeah, I didn't think anything of it. And then, you know, a week later it airs on road two, or actually it was, it was a countdown show to, to full gear and, and yeah. you know, everybody's tagging me online. I was like, Oh wow. Okay. That, I guess that was good. So, <laughs> um, I, I, you know, it's different, it's different kind of, uh, ways that people prepare for promos. A lot of people, uh, I, I know a lot of people that, that work at AEW will write out their stuff, have it memorized, time it mm -hmm. to the T and know exactly what they want to say. I just never have been like that. Um, Give me some bullet points. And like I said, thankfully, I know where things are going and I can kind of just riff. What are sort of the pros and cons of those two things? I think as I'm, I have only worked um, for WWE up until this point. That's the only version of wrestling that I know and sure. how that functions in your handed scripts. And we, you know, we know how that goes. But now being at AEW and there's not that, there are definitely pros and cons to both sides. How do you kind of see that? I, I think it. I think it, it. It will kind of depend on who the person is. Um, I like at AEW. There's and I've told Tony this a lot of times. Hey, you know, there's a lot of people on our roster that don't need that extra time to kind of formulate what they're going to say. Um, they can just kind of go and, and they know exactly what they want to say when the camera turns red. Uh, where there's other people that need extra time to prepare, to know what they're talking about. I think it just depends on who that person is. Um, yeah. I, before before WWE, WWE, I was never a talent, but the entire, my duration as a talent, you know, 18, 19 years was, I was never handed anything. You know, I yeah. was this is what you need to get across. Great. So that is kind of how I trained myself as a professional wrestler in cutting promos. Whereas people that go through the WWE system don't really get that luxury. So then when you, right. I remember your first day and I went up to you and I said, Hey, how's it feel to have no script? <laughs> yes. it's like, fuck, feels great. Yeah. You know, you know what's uh, really I, funny I, is because, so right before I was going out to do the promo with, uh, with the acclaimed on rampage and you came up and we were doing that promo with Keith Lee, yep. uh, and you came up and you gave me all the information that we needed. And then you walked off. I can't remember who was standing next to me. It might've been Billy Gunn maybe. And he mm -hmm. was just like, that's just how you do it. Right. Like you give me all the information that I need. Cool. You got that. You went off to do your thing. I want to do the thing with the acclaimed and then went to do the promo, uh, with yes. Keith Lee. Well, well, Renee, like to, to, to me, it's like if we are all here working here, uh, 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 you know, you have a certain talent that has brought you here. Yeah. So if if I don't have that trust in you as a talent to be able to do your job, as long as I am empowering you with the information that you need to know, um, yeah. I, I should 100 percent believe that you can pull off whatever it is I'm telling you. just yeah. need that information. So once yeah. that information is conveyed, and that's why I tell my team, here's the information that we need. Now, you guys all know what to do. Y'all mm -hmm. are so talented when it comes to talent production. Everybody is here for a reason so let those people go out and showcase their talents and why they are here yeah. um rather than micromanaging every single word and movement thank god thank god for that <laughs> <laughs> okay so that brings me to my next question working with tony khan how has your relationship with tony been um from day one to where you guys are at now i mean essentially i i, I don't know if using right hand man is necessarily the word but i mean you guys obviously work so closely together how has that relationship sure. developed over the time it's definitely blossomed um when i came in um you know, I, I remember having a conversation with Tony. I said, hey, man, I, I know you know me as a wrestler, but uh, other than that, I, I don't believe you know me from a hole in the wall, but this is what I do. This is what I have done. And this is what I am uh, that I can excel at. And and I didn't even want to say, hey, these are the holes that I see here. I just said, hey, look, this is what I can do. And I've done it for years. So whenever you feel like you need to utilize me, bam, put me in yeah. coach. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, and a lot of people don't realize, but uh, that work at AEW, but I came to AEW to do basically like one job as a producer. Uh, and then, you know, six months later. Wait, what was it, that it, job it, as a producer? What was that? Was so it something I, specific? I had, I had come in to help with the backstage uh, shots, okay. being a backstage producer. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so I always liken it to 
Uh, in wrestling, you have a TV producer, which I kind of feel like I'm a TV producer on backstage. But mm-hmm. then when I put the headset on, I'm a wrestling producer. Yeah. Um, they wanted, hey, we've got enough coaches and wrestling producers. Can you please help us backstage? Mm-hmm. And I did that at Impact. So boom, I came in to kind of help the, the, the pre-tape process and the backstage elements of the show. And then quickly, you know, I think three to six months later, uh, you know, I'm sitting in Tony's office all day. So I, I don't know how that I don't know how that blossomed. And um, I think I think internally and, I, you know, I probably had this conversation with my wife when, when I said, hey, I want to quit WWE and go to another place was, hey, l- let me get here and organically everything will fall into place. I'm yeah. not going to push anything, nor am I going to insert myself into where I don't need to be inserted. Mm-hmm. It will organically happen. And it did organically happen where, OK, well, we do need a little more help here. And hey, Sanjay has experience with that. Maybe he can help. But hey, Sanjay, you have formatted, timed and written television. Take a look at this. But just stuff like that. So yeah. kind of evolved to um, working side by side with Tony. And, and I love it, man. I've worked with all these, you know, powerful people in wrestling, these billionaires. And he is like the and, and maybe it helps that we're the same age. We're six months apart. Um, yeah. You know. Uh, we have a similar uh, background, you know, he, his dad's a Pakistani immigrant that came here. My parents are Indian immigrants. Yeah. Um, th- th- there's a relation there. It- it's funny. When I first met Shad, uh, I would just speak Punjabi with him all the time. Oh, um, wow. I, That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 you know, I, I feel like those kind of things brought us a little closer. Um, yeah. And then, Hey, I, I don't know, man, it just blossomed. And, and I love it. I love it. I love working with Tony just because he is, uh, he's just so approachable and, yeah. and he's just like a dude. He's just a cool dude. 100%. Speaking Punjabi, how often do you get to like speak Punjabi and get to like flex that? Uh, every time I was sat in them every Wednesday. <laughs> oh, you guys do. Oh, I've never seen you guys speaking Punjabi together. I, so, you know, obviously his English is good. Um, yeah. His, yeah, he's got great very, English. He, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, he's been here since uh 13 or 14. He's lived here since yeah. uh, you know, experience in the NBA and whatnot. But um I, I understand kind I kind of empathize with him in that he is still in a strange place. Yeah. He's still uh surrounded by people that he, you know, he, he his sister finally got her visa and she kind of finally got to move uh to Canada, so she's a little closer. Oh, um, that's but, nice. But yeah, it was it was great. You know, he was telling me and he was crying. It was a, it was a, it was an emotional moment for both of us. You know, I felt I felt for him. But, yeah. you know, I, I like to just make him feel at home uh, mm-hmm. and maybe, maybe he doesn't like that. I don't know. But uh, most of the time he and I uh, strictly speak Punjabi. I speak Punjabi to my mother still, um, yeah. even though she's been here since 1978 and mm-hmm. speaks perfect English. I still speak Punjabi to her. Uh, I, I love it. I, it That's awesome. I, I just feel That's like really cool. That, yeah, it's a connection that me and Sutton have, and you know, it. Hopefully, he can feel a little more at home when he's around me at work. Certainly, listen, I, I, yeah, listen. When me and my Canadian buddies all get together and talk about our packs of Molson two fours, it makes me feel a little more home. I love it. I love <laughs> exactly. <that. laughs> um, let's talk about Sutton a little bit though, because like he is a great a human being. Really Best. enjoy him. I mean, even before I was working for AEW, anytime I would be there, I just feel like. There's just, there's a warmth about him that you want to like hang out with him. You want to have those conversations. Anytime I have my daughter there, he's always trying to grab her and she's like, (laughs) it's a legit monster. (laughs) So we had Nora out with us when we were in Newark and I guess my mom maybe had Nora out by the ring and she wanted to get up to see John and and Sutton came and picked her up and handed her over to John, like just like swooped her up and handed her up into the ring to John. And she didn't know who was grabbing her. She turned around. She was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> but he's just there's like <laughs> that, a Shrek. Yeah, there's just like there's such a sweetness to him. Um, I, I truly adore him. Um, what has your experience been like working with him? I mean, obviously, the things that you just kind of rattled off, but. I love him. I love him. I love him as a person. I love him as a, as a professional. Um, me and him have obviously this bond where yeah. um, we're both from the same place with the same background. We speak the same language um, and there's not many of us in professional wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that, that connection kind of brings us uh, together right off the bat. 
Uh, it's funny. A couple of weeks ago, I did an interview with the New York Times. They were doing a, a story on Sutton, which maybe oh, I'm shit. spoiling that, but it's gonna it, it'll be coming out soon. Anyways, uh, some of the stuff I'm telling you is the same stuff that I told him. Where um, we have this connection, and, and he wants to excel at this. You yeah. know, he really wants to excel at this. And uh, Lethal and I have kind of taken a hand in kind of cultivating his in ring stuff whenever we can. Um, anytime there's uh tag matches with he and lethal he he hasn't had a singles match so uh we're getting to that point but i think we're getting real close anything we show him anything we tell him he soaks it up he uh utilizes the stuff that we tell him to utilize hey do this differently um I, and i didn't think that that would be the case uh i've worked with other uh, indian giants at WWE, <laughs> and that was not the case at all right uh, right so you know experience this with him it, it's cool because i always tell people Yes, he's seven foot four. Um, yes, he's a giant or whatever we want to call uh, somebody of that stature. And he's got size 20 feet, but he's an athlete. Mm -hmm. Like that's the difference between him and anybody else that uh, of his size that has gotten into professional wrestling. He's a legitimate athlete. So anything that we show him or tell him, bam, he pulls it off. And I love that. And I think that he's got such a bright future in wrestling. Um, he's 26, Renee. Let's not forget that he is a kid. He's a baby. Okay? Yeah. He's a baby. So yeah. I always kind of keep that in the back of my mind every week when, when, you know, we're, we're kind of talking with him that, Hey, he's still a kid. He's 26 yeah. and he's yeah. soaking in this new world um, that he probably had no clue about uh, before he stepped in it. So for him to excel this quick uh, in something that he probably never even watched uh, as a child, that's, that says a, a lot about his character and his athletic prowess. What are you having him watch? What's some of like the tape that you're getting setting them to view? I mean, I can imagine some of the obvious, but. Sure. I will say this. Uh, Paul, Paul White has taken a, obviously a kind of an interest in, in setting them. Sure. And, and uh, they that have. Giant kind of, heat. Don't get yeah, that giant heat. <laughs> right. But, but they've kind of hit it off. They, yeah. So, so when it comes to like tape study and stuff, I tell setting them, whatever Paul tells you, just listen and yeah. do that. So, yeah. uh, Paul, and I appreciate Paul taking that time and, and, and effort and energy that he expends with Sutton because there, you know, there's some days where, uh, lethal and I just don't have a chance to get in the ring with him, but Paul does. So yeah. I, I've kind of, I've kind of told Sutton, Hey, Paul will be your ticket to success. If you just yeah. listen to what he's telling you to do, he is experienced. He, if there's anybody in AEW that can empathize and sympathize with, uh, Sutton um, issues and problems and, and, and kind of excelling at something like this is Paul. No, oh, 100%. I mean, what are the odds of being able to like show up somewhere and you've got Paul White there to be like, oh, I can actually tell you exactly how all of this stuff works and what's going to work. Exactly. For you, not, et cetera. Exactly. So, so that's why I tell something a lot of times is look, Lethal and I will, we will tell you our perspective, but our perspective is going to be way different than his, yeah. his perspective and, and, and his insight will be more centered and geared to you. So yeah. whenever he wants to sit with you, just sit down and listen and soak it all in. The learning tree of show. Get up on the place to be. <laughs> um, for you to be reunited with Jay Lethal, what were what were those like first few moments like of you guys being like back in business together? So he he first when he first got here, um, it, it, it took I I would say maybe four or five months before we got linked together on television. Yeah. Um. So so those first four, four or five months that he was here, I was just like happy that my best friend in life is here next to me and yeah. we get to travel. And, and before that, you know, it was one, once a month he would fly here and spend the week or I'd fly to Tampa. So now it was like, Hey, we don't, we don't got to do any of that. Just we'll see each other every <laughs> Wednesday, you know? So uh, everything that I say about him uh, on TV is true. Uh, he's a godfather of my kids. He's my best friend. He's my family. Uh, Thanksgiving, Christmas, uh, you name it. So then when Tony comes to me and says, hey, I got an idea. I want you to manage Lethal on camera. I was like, what in the hell are you talking about, man? <laughs> and he says, oh, I got another idea. I'm going to put you with Sutton Singh. I said, what? That, that the, the seven foot four giant basketball player? <laughs> I, I, I I said, ah, uh, well, uh, okay, let's fucking go. <laughs> let's fucking so, go. Absolutely, man. Uh, <laughs> it, it, and I, I'll be honest, if if it wasn't lethal and if it wasn't Sutton, I probably would have told Tony, no, thank you. Um, I had no aspirations to be in front of the camera. 
Uh, yeah. not, not something that I ever wanted to do. I knew that that was behind me, but to work alongside my best friend in life yeah. uh, and, and to help a, a fellow countrymen such as Sutton, uh, yeah. kind of be the key to uh, the success of professional wrestling in India moving forward, sign me up. Um, it, it's awesome. It's, it's not work, man. It's just, it's so much fun. Um, I'm looking at a picture of lethal right now, you know, so it's, it, <laughs> it's, it, it's fun. Just, I, I'm with my best friend. That's not work, man. Being alongside those guys. It, it's, it's, I couldn't have wrote this story, man. It's, it's, un, it's indescribable how actually, uh, fun and happy and fulfilled I am to be out there with him. Yeah, it it really is nice. Like even like you know, for Soraya and I, for us to both show up at AEW like at the same time, you yes. know, her and I have always stayed in close contact. So when we're like, "Are you gonna go there? You're gonna go there? Let's do this!" Like, <laughs> yes. and it was so cool. Within like you know, maybe I think it was maybe a month apart, a couple weeks of of her debuting and then me being able to join as well. There's just like you know, when there's like that familiarity and somebody exactly. that it's yes. so nice to, i mean obviously my husband's there as well but he's always in like work mode he's doing his thing it's it's so nice to like have like your girlfriends there and other people like it's such a family backstage and i know you say that kind of everywhere within professional wrestling but it really is that and when you have like your people in like their long days there can always be some crazy things going on it's nice to like have your people that you can just kind of like recharge <laughs> that, 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 that's that's the key you know just going backstage or going to catering and seeing jay there i'm like all right cool everything's yeah, good yeah, no matter good. how stressful things are it's all it's all good talk to me about the pencil <laughs> oh gosh okay so um the pencil uh, i'm looking at about a hundred uh property of sanjay that pencils right now so i want i want to actually say shout out to kurt hawkins uh, he, he texted me and he said, Hey, check your mailbox. I opened my mailbox and he had gifted me like these custom property of Sanjay Dutt pencils. So oh, that's, awesome. that's what, so that was awesome. Um, where that started. So lethal and I were about to do our first, uh, live shot, uh, when we got linked together and I had my pencil, which is always there. So this was not something that I concocted for this gimmick. It wasn't a gimmick pencil. Zero. It, I always <laughs> have the pencil in the ear. I love to take notes. Um, uh, and that's the only way I can actually function. You asked, asked, asked me earlier, how do you function? A lot of it is taking notes. I always have my green little book, my moleskin and my pencil. So lethal says, Hey, take your pencil. I was about to do this live shot. And I looked at him and said, you know what? I'm just going to keep it in. And then it just stayed in from there. So then, uh, w one week I remember uh, a, a pen had exploded in my suit, my suit jacket. So I switched to pencils. And it always, I always would just put it in the back of my ear because I always knew, okay, uh, what, which pocket? It, no, it's always in my ear. So I always know mentally it's in my ear. And then it just kind of <laughs> stuck since then. Yeah. And you keep these pencils very sharp. Are you walking around with your own sharpener? What's the sharpener I situation? I do. I, I, have a, I have a little silver portable sharpener that I have in my suit coat uh, pocket right here that is always there ready to sharpen. There's nothing better than a finely sharpened number two pencil Renee we know what's in your luggage all yes, sharpeners yes. great yes. great great um <laughs> RJ City is always kind of like razzing you about the pencil but you also you you um work with RJ and doing um AEW as well yeah correct correct that guy. um Whew. So RJ, man, I think he's, I think he's one of the ta most talented guys that I've ever met. Yeah. And everywhere that I have gone, I have attempted to get him where I have been and say, oh, cool. you got to hire this guy. You got to hire yeah. this guy. How uh, did you guys so, meet? So, What's like the origin story of you two? Whew. So uh, we, we did kind of the, the similar indie circuit in the Northeast uh, mm -hmm. in the early 2010s. That's where I kind of first um, heard of him. I remember, um, DJ Z, I think he's uh, Joaquin Wild now on, on WWE. He showed me his promo. He said, "Hey, you got to see this this kid, RJ. Look at his promo." And I was like, "Holy cow! Like this dude gets entertainment. He gets television. He mm -hmm. gets television pro wrestling. Like even though he's not on television, why is this guy not on TV?" Yeah. So then I just attempted to get him hired everywhere I went. And then he started working on with you at the bump or were you on the bump? Who, who I the was bump not on the bump. That was all with Kayla. Um, but yeah, he's, I, I, I was, that's how I became familiar with RJ was when he was on the bump anyways. So when I saw him there, I was like, holy cow, this is uh, great. So then I went to Kapoor and I said, Hey man, you got to put him on the writing team. Like this dude's, this is the best. Yeah. Uh, and, and then pandemic happened, I think. And that was all kind of mixed. And then Tony, I guess, 
Uh, Tony Khan is, is a big fan of RJ's. Uh, I guess the three of us have a similar sense of humor. We all kind of <laughs> like the same things. I guess Tony reached out Very to RJ. Very specific sense of humor. <laughs> Very specific. Yeah. So Tony kind of reached out to RJ and then, you know, we created this Hey W thing. And I think it's probably some of the best stuff that AEW produces and puts out on a weekly basis that, yeah. that I wish that the whole world knew about. But uh, enough people do know about it. Yeah. And no, you, you it were on great. it. I was on it. I got yes. to be on it. I loved it. I'm, I mean, I'm a huge fan of RJ as well. I feel like as soon as I saw him on the bump and then more so like even just following his Twitter feed, I'm like, what is this guy's deal? The random shit he throws out there and his like commitment to the niche jokes like yes. kills me. Kills I, I think he's, me. he is definitely one of the most talented dudes in professional wrestling. Period. Yeah. Bar none. He is great. Um, Do you stay in touch with Dave Kapoor? I haven't spoken to him in quite a while. Um, yeah. So I should, I should, I should, I should text him. <laughs> Let's patch him in. We've got Dave Kapoor yeah. on the line. <laughs> so, well, spe speaking of, speaking of Indians and professional wrestling, there, there's, there's another one that kind of, he climbed the top of the mountain, man. He's done Absolutely. it. No, 100%. He's super, super talented. Um, uh, Working with Jeff Jarrett in AEW, having him step in there. What's your reaction to to Jeff joining the fray and, and you guys being reconnected again as wow. well. Wow. Um, just a special dude to me. Um, I have very few mentors in, in professional wrestling. He's, he would be probably the first person I would consider a mentor of mine. Um, I, I never envisioned myself in backstage capacity in, in any way, shape or form. He did. And he's the reason that I kind of am in where I am now. He's yeah. the first person that, that called me and said, Hey, do you want to sit in on the creative meetings? I said, okay. And, and you know, kind of blossomed from there. And, and I kind of started learning all the other aspects of, of, you know, producing television, putting it together, um, why things are the way they are, how we format TV, how we time TV. I learned kind of all that stuff from Jeff. Um, you know, he, like I said, he, he saw something in me that I didn't really know I had in me. And I think, all, I think that was, solely based on the fact that he knew that I had a college education. So, um, so if any <laughs> young wrestlers are watching this, get an education. Um, okay. So it's funny. I had that written down for, to talk to you about, because I don't, where did you go to school? What is your college degree in? So uh, I went to George Mason university, uh, Northern Virginia. It's right outside DC. I, I, I majored in communication and I concentrated on public relations. Okay. Um, the entire time that I, that I was in college. I was also a professional wrestler. Yeah. Um, so it was, it was a tough, like balancing act, but I remember my parents were always say, uh, you want to do this wrestling thing? That's fine, but you got to go to college and get your education. So I, I did both. What was like that initial conversation with your parents? You talk about them being immigrants to the United States. Um, they moved here before you were born, right? Yep. Yep. So for them to come here, them figuring out their footing, them creating this life for themselves and their son is like, I'm going to be a professional wrestler. And they were they always uh, really welcoming of that? <laughs> my mother, no. She, she was like, <laughs> so, so, so my dad, um, the, the reason I, 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 I fell in love with wrestling is my dad. So he, he came here in 79, immigrated in, I've, you know, in D.C., in the D.C. area. Um, and at that point in, in D.C., I guess – Every territory was on television, Mid-South, Georgia, Mid-Atlantic, Florida, everything. And he fell in love with professional wrestling. He taped it all. And I still got VHS tapes downstairs. For, Who from were your him. dad's guys? Who was he really into? Whew. Uh, strangely enough, he always would talk to me about how he loved Pistol Pez Watley. Uh, <laughs> he loved Thunderbolt Patterson. Um, you know, he, he liked he, he liked that gritty mid-atlantic nwa territory wrestling uh I, I remember greg valentine and roddy piper dog collar match he fucking loved that um <laughs> so so he, he he loved the territory wrestling and that's how i fell into wrestling so when i said to them look hey i want to be a professional wrestler my dad you know he thought it was cool he didn't think i think in the back of his head he was like all right well you'll get a job eventually. My mom was yeah. like, you're fucking out of your mind. Um, I'm going to tell my, my Indian friends that my son is a wrestler. <laughs> you should be a, a doctor, a lawyer, engineer, like every other Indian. Uh, yeah, fuck yeah. That. I'm not doing that. So yeah. um, they, they quickly 
realize, okay, he's kind of good at this. So, I, I mean, I, I signed my first contract two years into wrestling. So my mom was like, kind of like, okay, well, maybe there is something to this. Um, then I bought a house and uh, she, she said, oh, she still wasn't convinced. I remember she, she called my wife and she said, Ashley, can you please tell him to, to find something else to do? Like he could become an FBI agent. I'm, I'm like 26. I just bought a house, mom. You want go me to work for the FBI? bureau. Let's go. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, cool. You know, I live in Virginia. So I just go to yeah. Quantico and just go to the <laughs> FBI Academy. Huh? That, that's how it works. Right. So uh, they, they, they quickly realize, OK, he's good at this. He has, you know, cultivated a, a niche for himself and he can make a living and he can support his family. And that's all we really ask for in life. Did you feel that pressure to hurry up and get success? because of that like I mine's like a different story but I remember like my mom was very much like I don't think she really understood what I was trying to do and I think she thought it was like such a hoop dream that she was like if by 25 you don't have any success we should probably call it and sure. you know I, I started pretty young but I you know I I signed my first television contract at like 23 so I was like phew okay good I, I got the success that I kind of needed to like prove to everybody that this isn't just like some bullshit but did you feel like that same kind of pressure uh, a, li a little bit. Yeah. So, so broadcast journalism. So kinda... I didn't go. No. So I, out of high school went and did like second city. I was taking acting classes. Oh, wow. I was auditioning. I was waitressing. Like I was doing like that road, but as I was sure. like, how do I get on television? That'll make everyone know if they can see me doing the thing, then they'll know that I'm being successful yes. at the thing. Um, so yeah. It was, so so it was, when I, no, Go sorry. Uh, I was just gonna say when I got on television, similar to you, when I got on television, I thought, okay, well, I mean, what 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 else you want from me? I'm on TV, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, my, my, like I said, my my dad was he he just wanted to like, hey, who did you meet this week? You know, <laughs> uh, oh, you know, oh, yeah. wait, your boss is Jeff Jarrett. Oh, oh, oh t tell me about Jeff Jarrett. Uh, can, can you get any stories stories about Jerry Jarrett? Because he used to watch Memphis. Yeah, and, yeah, you yeah. Know, So my dad was like that. My mom was just like, all right, well, ho hopefully he'll kind of figure something else out. And I never did. And I mean, now she's fine with it, obviously. But um, yeah. she her, her, her biggest trepidation was uh, watching my son get hurt. A yeah. And I'm an only child. And, and she was like, this, this is my only son. And, he, and I ha obviously I've, you know, wrestled. For You're an only child. It all makes sense. Oh now gosh, I, I ruined it. I blew my spot. <laughs> I blew my spot. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh. It's funny when you meet someone, you're like, oh, I remember the first time I met uh, the Miz and we were like bullshitting and he's like, you know, Mike going like a mile a minute. I was like, you don't have siblings, do you? He's this like, is the well, only why child? would you say that? Yes, he is. Like, why would you say that? I'm like, you are an only child. Well, that explains everything then. 100%. 100%. <laughs> that is so funny <laughs> so okay so when you're going to school you're going uh communications public pu pu public relations as well yeah. why did yep. you stutter yeah. on that so much um when did you ever think you were going to do something with that or were you just kind of checking no. the box with that checking the boxes checking okay. boxes so, yeah. so i remember uh the way i picked my major was i looked at all the credits that i had already attained and yeah. then i looked at the majors and i said oh wow this gets me to this major quick yeah. so I can get done with school and just focus on wrestle, 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 wrestle. Yeah. So that's kind of how I figured out my major. Um, but yeah. So Jeff Jarrett came out and he did, he cut this promo. I think it was like maybe the week after he arrived and he like rattled off your IQ. It was like 181 <laughs> or something, 181, 20, whatever it was. But I was like, he said that and I was like, wait, is that real? Do you have a very uh, high IQ or is he just talking to talk? Do we know? Do we know what your IQ is? Let, let, let's just keep that as a question mark, okay? How about that? <laughs> okay, we'll, all right. We'll just let that simmer and people can kind of figure it out themselves. <laughs> okay, <laughs> fair <laughs> enough. But I heard that and I was like, wow, I mean, I do see the way that you're like functioning and thinking and you're like, you're definitely like functioning at an elite level, no pun intended. Oh, thank um, you. But, uh, but anyways, I digress. Um, okay, so your time in AEW has been great. What are some things that you still really want to do um, in terms of like producing things? Is it like producing like a certain match? Is it the backstage things? Is it like expanding into like other television markets that we can maybe put AEW? 
w- w- one thing that I do want for the future of AEW, um, th- 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 I don't have any personal goals within the company. My, my goals would be goals for the company, for us to continue to grow and succeed. Uh, because when the company does, you know, it's a trickle down effect. We all do. Yeah. Um, but but one thing that I do want to take a, a more of a prominent hand in uh, in the next couple of years is kind of uh, breaking into the Indian market. Um, right. it, it's a market that everybody you know kind of uh ha- has wanted to in-, in western entertainment you know everybody wants to break into china and india and china and india uh, i would love for uh aew to kind of break through in india and, and be a big part of that um in 2012 11 jeff jeff jared and i we kind of did this rink king thing over there yeah. where we created this promotion from scratch totally from scratch and built it around indians it was all in hindi uh so wow. i i don't know if that's if that i don't know if that's what we do but i i would love to have a a strong hand in uh creating a niche for AEW in india why is wrestling so huge in india what Great is question. that what is that connection? Because it's funny. I was just talking to, uh, to big Cass about this. Cause I was like talking about like the breakdown on like my Instagram or whatever. I was like, my biggest following is like, it goes the United States and then like the UK and India. India. And then like a hu- yeah. Like India is a huge market for professional wrestling. What is that connection? Uh, so I don't know if I can pinpoint what that is, but uh, it, it's a, it's a, it's a combat fighting culture where, uh, some of the oldest, uh, traditional Indian sports, uh, one of them was, is called Kushti, which is, um, kind of amateur wrestling in, in a mud pit. Okay. And that's kind of been since day one. And, and one of the greatest Indian professional wrestlers, Dara Singh, you know, he, he drew out, he drew sold out stadiums with Luthez all across India. And, and he came from Kushti. And I think that that's a big part of it where wow. uh, the most popular Bollywood movies are all centered around action. Um, mm. Ludicrous stunts, uh, you know, jumping off of this and taking out this guy and landing on a horse and then uh, you know ducking a sword and uh, slicing this guy's neck off. So uh, Indian culture and, and entertainment is so, so centered around uh, fighting and combat that I think that that kind of has created professional wrestling to kind of catapult itself to the top of kind of the Western entertainment that comes to India. And a lot of it, uh, what, you, what you were noting about your Instagram account and stuff like that, uh, Indi- India's population, obviously 1.4 billion, but yeah. I mean, everybody, ask, ask those Bollywood boys, they'll tell us all about it. Of course, yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But, 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 you know, a majority of those people consume all of their entertainment through, through this, you know, yeah. uh, t- TVs are, are one thing, but everybody's got a mobile phone and everybody's on YouTube. And that's why, you know, a lot of the highest viewed WWE videos are like Kavita, the, the yeah. Indian yep. uh, girl. Right. That, uh, yes. You know, uh, and a lot of that is is that, um, you know, everybody consumes everything on that phone and anything that is India related. If there's an Indian that has made success outside of India in the Western world and whatever entertainment field that is, they are ultimately instant heroes to the Indian market. So they are going to follow them no matter what. Uh, but but I think a lot of it stems from the fact that uh, so much of entertainment is is centered around fighting and combat. What was your experience like when you guys got to go over there and put that promotion together? Had you been to India prior to that? Yeah. So uh, the first time I went was I was like seven or eight with family. Okay. Um, yeah. I, I went a few times with family and then. Uh, what part of India? So my, my family is probably from New Delhi. And okay. then uh, a small part is from the state of Punjab, north, okay. northern India. Um, so. After that, I think I went to India for the first time wrestling related in 2005 and a promotional uh, tour for, for uh, TNA wrestling. Um, but we, when we did Rink of King, you know, it was it was surreal because we had to. Uh, so Road Dog and I went there and we did this casting call across the country. Uh, we saw like 300 Indians. I don't think maybe two of them knew what professional wrestling was and they came yeah. to this casting call because they wanted to be on this TV show. And we picked uh, basically out, out of thin air what who we thought could succeed as professional wrestlers. And we made them professional wrestlers. And, you know, they were Easy. stars. Uh, the first episode of, of Rinka King did 18 million viewers. I mean, Whoa, so in, in that shit. respect, it was, yeah. Yeah, 18 million viewers. So that was like our, our, our peak rating, you know, which was crazy. I, I think a bad wow. week for us 
it was like 11, 10, 11 million people. But obviously it's, you know, it's 1.4 billion people that you're pooling from. So yeah. uh, a bad rating sometimes is 10 million people. <laughs> so, Holy shit. Wow. Yeah. It, That's it was a, crazy. It was a totally surreal experience just creating creating a, a actual television show, a promotion um, from scratch. Okay. So completely aside from wrestling in India, talk to me about the food in India. I love do you Indian food? Oh my God. I love yeah. Indian food. Absolutely. When you're, when you're in India, what's like the go-to? Cause I feel like we probably get like the very Americanized version of Indian food here. Sure. sure. Uh, so I, I'll tell you my main thing about eating in India is I, uh, I, all I'm worried about is getting sick. Sure. Okay? sure. I, 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 We've heard the Booker about. T stories. We've heard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's all I'm worried about. Um, I remember when we did Rinka King, Scott Steiner was so paranoid. He had one huge roller bag and it was nothing but cans of tuna, hot plate, beans, you name it. He <laughs> ate not one meal in India. Yeah, um, yeah. So I, I, I love Indian food. Uh, obviously, the, the butter chickens. And, and yeah. uh, you ever had goat or lamb? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I actually, didn't we just, we just had goat and catering the other day, didn't we? Yes, yes. It was great. Uh, Yes, I love it. Was it was really I, good. I, I, I did awesome. too. Yeah, me too. It was good. Yeah. So you like spicy food? Yeah. Give it all oh. to me. I love it. Great. I love the spice. I love like, yeah, there's a very big Indian culture in Canada and in Toronto of course. in particular. Yes. Yep. So yeah, I mean, there's, there's like some really great restaurants to go out to. I feel like I've not, I mean, in Cincinnati, I don't think I'm going to find like the finest no. Indian fare. <laughs> I think you can find some great stuff in Toronto. So like Toronto, Brampton. yes. Bra yeah. Brampton, yeah. which is nothing but Indians. I, yeah. I remember so every yeah. every year Canada Day, July first, mm -hmm. um, I would go to Brampton and I would do the show for uh, Tiger Jeet Singh and his family, yeah. and they would put on this benefit show. Uh, and, and literally, and I'm not, it would sometimes from anywhere from five thousand to ten thousand people outside in Brampton watching oh professional God. wrestling, and they're all Indian, all yeah. Indian. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yes. I felt like, I felt like, you know, like the rock. <laughs> it was, it's really cool. No, stuff. it's great. Even in like the little India part of Toronto, it's like, it is so great. That's the one thing about Toronto that I love is like how diverse and multicultural it is, but it's like the authentic yes. versions. So of you all family? Of yeah. All my family's all still family in Toronto. Oh my all my gosh. family's still in Toronto. Yeah. I don't, I don't get up there as often as I would like, but now that we're in Cincinnati, I'm like a little bit closer. So I think if I get there every like six months, I can kind of scratch that itch a little did bit. Did you get to but... see uh, family when we did TV? Yes. Yeah. Oh, because awesome. that's, that's when I debuted. So I was able, like, we, we didn't get to stay as long though. I wish that we did, but um, yeah, I got to see my mom. Uh, my dad was out of town, but like my brother, we got to see everybody. It was, awesome. Great. Awesome. it was so, so good. Very cool. Um, yeah, I love those Canada days. It's just yes. the best. Um, so, okay. What else, how do you juggle the work family life? Cause you're also family man, your dad, your Total. husband, you're all those Total. things. How do you, uh, how do you strike that balance? I, I'll say this, uh, one thing that I, that I want to commend AEW, uh, for is, uh, you know, the, the executives at AEW are very conscious of, of having a good work life balance. Yeah. Um, and, and that Thank helps God. a lot. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Um, I love wrestling. I love my job, but, uh, my wife and my children are, you know, obviously first and foremost, um, yeah. li like I said earlier too, it's, it's about time management. So when I'm home, it is all about time management. Um, mm -hmm. so I, I remember you said, Hey, what time do you want to do this? And I was like, okay, well, I can get done with what I got to get done. <laughs> And then yeah. I can do this and then I can get done with this and I can go pick up my kids from school. Yes. So it's all about yep. time management. That's all, all it is. All about juggling those things. Absolutely. So your wife was at TV with us a couple of weeks ago and her and I got to hang out in uh, talent viewing for a second. And that was like right before, or it was right after Halloween. She was yes. telling me that you're a big Halloween guy. Are you also a big Christmas guy? Are you like a big holiday guy? So I, I'm a big, um, put a smile on the kids faces guy. So okay. whatever that takes, I will okay. do. And, and not just my kids, but uh, in our neighborhood, you know, a couple of the families we're very close with all their kids are best friends with our kids. And yeah. so I just try to pop them. So for <laughs> Halloween, I'll just try to figure out the most ridiculous thing that I can be. I was just, I was one of those inflatable, um, I was an inflatable rodeo guy. Yeah, this year. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, last year I was, a, I was an inflatable sumo, but it looked like the guy was kidnapping me and I'm just walking around the neighborhood, just trying to pop That's everybody. Amazing. So yeah. <laughs> uh, my wife is a big Christmas uh, person. So the okay. house is, we've got two trees and everything. It's, it's, 
all, all over the house is Christmas. You decoration. got to. I know. Actually, as soon as we're done this, I think I'm going to try to wrangle John to go get our tree. We put we put up a tree, but it's kind of unsatisfactory as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. So I think we got to go get another tree. This tree is kind of bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most important thing, Renee. Much Come to on. his chagrin, he's going to be like, "Oh my god, we already have a tree up. Leave me alone." But. I know bah, humbug. for me. I know. Bah humbug. Uh, well, listen, Sanjay, I appreciate you taking the time. I know you're a busy man. Um, I love that we get to work so closely together and I can like really see how you operate and all the things that you bring to the table. So on the up and ups, we're going to continue to hit home runs, continue Absolutely. to crush it. Um, yeah, you're the shit, dude. Renee, it's been a pleasure. Like you said, we didn't get to work much at WWE, but this interaction that we've had, we're working together for whatever the past few months it's yeah. been a pleasure um like i said more than anything i just love working with very very talented people and and, and trusting in them to hit home runs which you are doing constantly the whole company is i appreciate you having me on here uh it's an honor thank you thanks dude